GoodNotes now has a free download on the Mac for GoodNotes users. Updates from Notability and NotShelf in the last couple of months. Changes to Microsoft Office and Wonderlist. The paperless classroom and paperless offices are a reality for most overnight because of the COVID-19 pandemic. All coming up in this news edition. Hey guys, it's Rob Sipak with Paperless X, a channel that is all about digital productivity. If you're new to my channel, hello. Don't forget to subscribe if you're looking for solutions to go paperless with your studies, work or business. And if you're already subscribed, make sure you turn on your notifications so you know each time I release a new video. The Good News team has been dishing out a lot of bug fixes for the last two months with minor improvements scattered about. The sizes of their updates has not been small as one would expect for bug fixes. Their latest bug fix update from a few days ago was as big as the application itself. We have received some few useful updates though in the application, like the ability to filter our outlines in the application. We can now decide which outline we want to see, whether you want to see your own outline that you've created in the application, or you want to see the outline that came with the PDF when you imported it. You can now create folders when moving your documents. Before we could only move to already existing folders or you had to create your folder before moving your documents. This little addition improves our lives and it's a welcome update. They added a new scrolling shortcut. You can tap the status bar with your Apple Pencil or finger to scroll up. We look forward to a shortcut for scrolling down. I still find using my finger on the screen is much easier. GoodNotes 5 on Mac is now free for users that buy the iPad or iOS version. GoodNotes 5 has released a new version of the application that is part of a universal purchase with the iPad OS or iOS version. So if you buy GoodNotes 5 on your phone or iPad, you can get the application for free. If you use the same Apple ID, you can get it for free on your Mac. I love GoodNotes 5 for this because most of us have complained about buying the application twice. I can't help but freak out because I'm just wondering how are they going to make money? It's good for consumers, not sure if it's good for business. If you have already bought the application already, you can request a refund from Apple. In Notability, the Not Switcher now moves to the right in left-hand mode. So for all the left-handed people, this is good news. You can now create text boxes in Notability and you can rotate them. Honestly, these are technically not text boxes if I can't add borders around them. They're more like sticky notes, but it's fun to rotate them, so I'll take that. They also added some colors to our laser pointer. We now have four colors to choose from, red, blue, lime green, and yellow. And we also have an option to hold laser tail. It's just a fancy way of saying you can draw with your laser pointer now. They've also added some features to the audio recording tool. I just went through how to improve your audio playback a few days ago. And if you've not seen that video, I will link it in the description down below. Now you can remove the animation preview. I can see how useful this can be for study. Everything on the page disappears. And if you like self-testing, this might just be a good way to test yourself everything on the page disappears completely then it plays back and it reappears but now you don't get that preview to show you the notes before they get written again and i think this is so much better especially for reviewing work if you think this animation is silly or childish or you don't like it for whatever reason you can now turn it off completely and just play back your audio Notability now unlocks password protected PDFs when you import them into the application. If you've been dying to open a PDF that has a password on it, Notability can do it for you. I've not tried this yet because I couldn't access any logged PDF. Yeah, I've not tried it. NotShell version 7 revamped their homepage. They have added a sidebar to the left here for easier navigation through our folders. You can toggle to see your folders or most recently opened documents and your pinned notebooks.
Under your categories, you can group notebooks together, but you can't have groups within groups. And this means a two-level hierarchy system like the one we have in Notability. I wonder how not shelfers feel about this change. You can also pin your favorite documents to the sidebar. Simply long press the notebook and pin it. It's that simple. You can also drag and drop notebooks to move them to different folders. It makes for an easier navigation. Basically, NoteShelf has really improved their navigation in the application. We can now add digital diaries with customization on the start date and end date on your digital diary. But this is still limited to just 12 months, so you can only have a maximum of up to 12 months per digital diary. NotShelf continues to be dedicated to bringing us cheaper digital planner solutions. This can now potentially be the cheapest solution for digital planners if you like the layouts that you get in NotShelf because the application just released an update to export hyperlinked documents. My attempt to do this, and I'm assuming this is a bug, the application has no way of indicating whether or not the hyperlinks have been exported. I haven't been successful to export a hyperlinked document yet. My export is just getting stuck. It processes and it stops and that's it. For hours actually. So I think this is a bug and it needs fixing. And as soon as it's ready and as soon as it's working, I will do a separate video dedicated to exporting hyperlinks in NotShelf. Microsoft Office 365 is becoming Microsoft 365 starting from the 21st of this month. They have been sending out emails to their subscribers. It seems for now, nothing is changing. Just the name, I suppose. At least that is the case for my subscription. I have the home version of Microsoft Office 365, the one that gives you six users for the subscription. So that's the one that I'm using. And that's going to soon change from Microsoft Office 365 home to Microsoft 365 family. That is the version that I'm using. And so far, I've not really been able to spot any changes. I suppose I will wait for it to take effect and see if I notice anything. Wonderlist, the planning application that got assimilated into Microsoft's to-do application, is finally closing shop. After months of moving their app to Microsoft and advising their users to do the same, they are finally shutting down the application completely on the 6th of May this year. I wonder if this is every developer's dream to be assimilated into a much bigger company or, you know, you prefer to work on your application until it's the ultimate. Paperless classrooms have become a reality overnight across the globe. The COVID-19 pandemic has seen the world as we know it come to a sudden stop. Most workers have been sent home with a few working online from home. And the same has been happening for students as well. I'm currently working with both educators and students, helping them with the new study setup that has just been suddenly dropped on them. Some are using Zoom. Other schools have resorted to using Microsoft Teams while others are using Google Classroom. We suddenly overnight have paperless teachers, paperless students, paperless office workers because we are all working online and we have to distribute information online. Are we ever going back to the traditional office setup after this pandemic? So if you're working from home or studying from home, I'd like to hear your experiences. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.